Hey guys, welcome to this vlog. To catch you up, I've been living in my car for a month in Central Europe, training for climbing World Cups. And in this video, it's time to finally start competing. So I'll take you along with me to give you a rough idea of what it feels like to compete in World Cups after only a month of training as a full-time professional climber. Firstly, to wrap up the final training portion of this quick series, here are a few video compilations that Udo made from our training. The training phase in these videos was between the European Cup and the three World Cups which I competed in. This period of the year is the funnest time to be around Central Europe because everyone is training here in between the comps. And this time I got to train with the Hong Kong national team. They were so much fun and it was really interesting because they have the exact opposite style to me. So I feel like I learned a lot quickly this way. It was also nice for learning to be less intimidated when climbing with much stronger guys than me because that's definitely important if I want to be climbing in the World Cups. In the meantime, we went to Belgium for the European Cup and now we're in Prague getting ready for the first World Cup for me of the season tomorrow. So now it's time to go to the competition venue to do some registrations and see what it's all about. Limousine number one, limousine number two. During the day before the competition, it's always nice to have some sort of active rest day, playing around with some coordination and moving around. If I have a completely lazy day, I might be rested, but during the day of the competition, I won't feel activated or have any energy. It's always nice to be with a good fun crew the day before to get psyched for the competition and forget about any nerves. And I'm really grateful to have been really lucky with that recently. So I'm in the car on the way to the competition venue on the way to isolation. Yesterday, well, I drained the battery flat, I left the lights open, I managed just to charge it up, but I don't have any jump cables now. Anyways, long story short, the car has to start or I'm going to have to go running or take the bus to the competition, so fingers crossed. Ah, there we are, that's quite a relief. Let's go to the competition. Okay, so now I'm going to summarize. Now in Prague, Day of the competition, on my way to isolation. Isolation closes at 8 o'clock, so it's bright and early in the morning, 7 in the clock right now. Gonna sit in isolation until 5 minutes to 1, so 5 hours pretty much. And then gonna compete in my second ever World Cup. This competition didn't go too badly for me. I was making good progress on some of the movement boulders and felt relatively satisfied with the progress from the last competition. It was definitely a step in the right direction. Still, I didn't feel even close to strong enough for any of the power boulders. And even though I knew I wouldn't be strong enough from the start, it's sometimes mentally draining to not even be able to get off the first move of a boulder. But I had to keep my head up for the ones which I could actually make some progress on. And I think I did this pretty well. After the Prague World Cup, we went to Dresden for a small training camp at the Mandala bouldering gym for a few days before the Brixen World Cup next week. It was the halfway point between all my comps and at that moment I got sick with a blocked nose and a sore throat but I pushed through the training which could have been a bad move but luckily I quickly recovered and was good to go for the next competition. It wasn't the nicest being sick while living in a car but luckily it was cosy enough and I didn't suffer too much. Also next to the gym was a really cool antique car shop which was nice to see. Maybe if everything goes well, the next road trip could be with one of those cars. And then it was time to go to Brixen for the second World Cup. The Brixen World Cup didn't go as well as Prague. I knew I could have done two of the boulders for sure, but after not climbing those ones which I knew I should have climbed, I got in a really bad mindset and didn't enjoy the comp at all. I had no psych anymore and just wanted the competition to be over, which was a terrible mindset to be in and it pretty much gave me no chance to do anything else on the rest of the boulders, which kind of sucked. Then it was finally time to go back to Innsbruck. This World Cup definitely had the hardest qualification round of the lot. Even though I didn't climb anything here, I'd learnt a lot from my mindset troubles in Brixen and was actually pretty happy and positive throughout the whole round and it was a really nice way to end my competition season this year. So now in the video, it was time to go for some outdoor bouldering with a crew in Ötztal. 
we walked down this riverbed and ended up in a sweet little cove of boulders. After this, the climbing part of the trip was coming to an end and it was time for some last days of fun in Innsbruck with the guys before leaving. While these clips are playing, I'll just summarise some of my feelings from my two month trip, which are quite mixed. On the one hand, all the new experiences I made were incredible. For the first time in my life, I was able to focus 100% on climbing with fantastic people around me. And living more or less full time in my car for two months was also a dream which has finally turned into reality. On the other hand, I wasn't really satisfied overall with my performance in the competitions. I know I wasn't supposed to have any expectations or anything, but maybe subconsciously I did. I don't really know where my climbing journey will take me next, but one thing's for sure, I'll keep doing it for as long as I love it, for as long as I physically can. Ever since I started climbing, it's taken me on some crazy adventures, but overall, this one was definitely the biggest and the craziest, and there are memories in there which I will never forget. These are the trips I live for, and I can't wait for more. I wish I could make a better video showing everything the way I experienced it, but I don't think that's possible. Maybe I'll get there someday, and if you want to see that, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Finally, we had one last climbing session in Munich and then it was time to start thinking about heading back home. So now, the next part of the adventure is driving back to Greece with the family who flew up and joined me in Munich. This really was quite the adventure and I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who supported me and created memories together along the way, especially Udo, Eva and all the guys from the Hong Kong team. Also. Many thanks to the Greek national team for the support. Let's not forget Celine, without whom I wouldn't have been able to do any of this. And together we completed 12,000 kilometers without having to deal with any real breakdowns. Apart from the end, next episode or two. Celine was my dream car ever since I was a little tiny boy and I was being picked up from school in this car, being proud to being picked up by a Citroen BX and um, yeah, I just fantastic I was able to do a road trip with such a dream car. If you guys like what I'm doing, I'd really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up and maybe click the subscribe button down below. Thanks.